What's up, YouTube? It is your boy, JB, and I'm here tonight with the review for Greenleaf Season 4, Episode Number 5, titled Unwanted. And there are a lot of people in this episode that are unwanted. <laughs> Ooh, the two in particular. And I'm going to start with the first one. So without further ado, you guys, let's just go ahead and just jump into the video. All right, so we're going to start the episode out with where it began, with Charity's old dumb behind. So we see Charity, you know, she's with her son, playing with him finally. But then she tells him, you know, well, mommy's probably not going to be around a lot. And I'm like, really, you dumb fool? So you really still think about sending out your family, huh? More specifically, your sister. So, you know, Grace comes in there and she's like, Charity, why would you call Noah? She was like, you broke up that family. And Charity's like, I didn't know such thing. She said, you call, you call Jacob. Why? She says, well, I, you know, I found out that Jacob was in town and he didn't come by and say hello. She says, so you felt the need to call him? She said, you know how Isabel feels about me. She's like, well, if that's how Isabel feels, then, you know, I knew nothing about that. Charity, you knew full well what you were doing. I just, you know, if I wish Grace would just had just, just, just reached over to Charity and just slapped her face. Like, girl, you knew what you was doing. And then she's going to try to sit there and say that, you know, if anyone broke up a family, it was probably Noah and um, Grace. And I'm like, really? So now you're going to try to place the blame on Grace and Noah. But you are the one that called. Isabel had no idea that Noah was in, you know, Tennessee, in Memphis. Like, he had no idea. She had no idea. And you know that you knew what you were doing. You knew exactly what you did. You knew the history that Grace slept with him when he was engaged to Isabel. Like, you knew that. And then was like, well, you know, uh, Jacob and I, we, I'm not Jacob, but Noah and I, we go back. She was like, girl, when y'all were five? She said, yes, that just proves that I know, I've known him a long time. Shut up, Charity. Charity gets on my last freaking nerves. Ugh. Like, are you serious? So then after Grace had, you know, told her about herself, we see her in her bed and she's listening to her sermon. And I'm guessing, I'm like, oh, now your conscience want to come and talk to you. Miss me with that, Charity. So then we see Charity, she goes to talk to Carlton, and you know, she tells Carlton, I'm going to help for bringing up a family. And Carlton's like, mm, I don't know if you want to help with that one. He says, but if you haven't, um, you know, eliminated what you were doing that for, then yes, you could still want to help. And you know, because she's talking about how she just couldn't sleep. I'm like, that is your guilty conscience finally catching up to your dumb behind. Like, you are sitting here letting Phil an outsider make you turn your back on your own family, people that you know your whole entire life, but you're going to turn your back on your family for a film, to be an AP. And as an AP, like, would you be would you be able to look at yourself in the mirror knowing every Sunday, you know, I'm going to go here, I'm going to preach to these people, tell them a good word, but I'm, I, I did sneaky and underhanded stuff to get to this point. Like, could you actually live with yourself if you did that? She probably could. I mean, Charity... Whatever. She's so stupid. Like, one minute you think she, you know, one minute you kind of, you, you can't stand it. Then you think, oh, maybe she's come to her senses. Because we did see her. She go to Phil's office. And, you know, Phil wants to know who is AJ. Because AJ was in um, Grace's office. And we'll get to him a little, a little later. And she, he's like, I need you to find who it is. She says, I can't do it. She says, you know, um, she called Noah. And now, you know, he's getting divorced. So she feels completely bad. So she can't do what Phil wants her to do. And then she says, I'm not like you. And, you know, um, she says she just she says to get to AP, she doesn't want to mess up anybody's lives. And she definitely doesn't want to mess up her sister's life. I'm like, oh, wow. Finally, Cherry has come to her senses. So we think. So then we see another scene where Phil is in the hallway with Charity and he's talking to Charity. And Phil is feeling some type of way because Charity said, because she said to him, say so didn't get behind me. And then he said, you know, he felt some type of way about her saying that she's not like he, she's not like him at all. He says, you don't really know who I am. How about I take you out to dinner? She says, no. Then he just kept talking to her, talking about, let me take you out to dinner. She says, I'll think about it, Phil. She'll think about it. Like, are you freaking serious, Sherry? You are so dumb. So, because he says she has the wrong idea about him. So, we see that Charity did take Phil up on his offer for dinner. And, you know, Phil is just telling her about himself, how I forgot how old he said he was when, um, you know, a Bob found him. And then he tells her that he is Bob. And she's like, what do you mean you're Bob? He says, so Bob's sermons, Bob's book, everything that, everything that Bob has that he's written, Bob didn't write it. I wrote it for Bob. And then he's talking about how he has hopes to take over Calvary. And that this might be his only, his last chance with an all-black church. I'm like, oh, okay. Still don't like you. So then we see, you know, Charity, she's reading 
uh, Bob's book, and she's all smiles because she now knows that Phil wrote that. I'm like, girl, you are the dumbest person. You're the second dumbest person on this show, aside from your sister-in-law. Like, you two are neck and neck for dumb, dumb and dumber. Dumb and dumber. But we can move on, you guys, from Charity's dumb behind. All right, so next we see Jacob. So Jacob is thanking God for, you know, all of his many blessings that he has right now. And then he's asking God to help him by using him to help the homeless. So we also see that, you know, um, Jacob is giving a pitch to the board. Of, and, you know, um, we see kind of her, her raggedy wig. And he's pitching this idea to the homeless people, which I'll go, I'll discuss it a little bit more once I get to that point where uh, Phil talked to Grace about it. But, you know, while he's trying to give his pitch, Zora keeps blowing up his phone. And, you know, at first he ignored it, but then she called back again. So then he, he says, you know what, this is my daughter, so I got to step out to take this phone call. Ooh, crap. Excuse me, y'all. So then once he steps out to take the phone call... It's Zora. She's on FaceTime with him, and she's telling him that Dante is out of control and that she needs him to get there to help her. So, you know, he's like, you know what? I'm on my way. And then, you know, Grace actually tries to stop him and say, hey, like, can this wait? He says, no, it's, it's Zora. So then she sees him leaving, and she's like, okay, you know, I think that he's done a good enough job pitching this, so let's get to a vote. And we'll get into all of that in a little bit. So we see Jacob, you know, after the whole day is ended, he's talking to Carissa, and, you know, he tells her he left, he had to leave the board meeting early because of Dante. And, you know, he tells her Dante got fired from the Red Devils, and now she has to wait on that house. <laughs> ah! Oh, I can't, and we're going to get into that a little later as well. Oh, my God, that was so freaking funny. But we're going to get into, you know, everything that I'm skipping right now a little later. So just stick with me, you guys. All right, so next we see Lady May. So she's reading Bob's book, and she's just trying to get a little intel, a little input on who Bob is and what Bob is up to. So then Carissa comes in there, and Carissa asks her for the furniture, and Lady May is like, you can get a credit card, and you can get your own furniture. Like, you'll feel much happier when you get your own furniture because she tells them that they're moving. And, you know, May says, uh, again, May says no. She's like, because the last time I gave you the furniture, when you went into that house for Triumph, the, um, the Nigerian... He went on eBay and sold my furniture. She says, yes, we had to do that in order to, face, you know, to um, not um, be pursued legally. And, you know, like I said, May told her, buy your own furniture. So then Bishop, we see Bishop, he comes in, into the house with Corinne. And, you know, they ask him, like, so what are you doing? He's like, oh, you know, Corinne is helping me put, um, you know, my past sermons on um, a hard drive. Because so, he's doing his first uh, research for Atlanta. And we see that May is still not happy about this, and she leaves. So then we see Bishop. He goes to talk to May, who is visibly mad at him. And, you know, he tells her, like, give Carissa the furniture. She says, I told Carissa no. So I see that Carissa came to you to ask you for the furniture. The answer still is no. And, you know, May is like, I want my son to live here with us. And, you know, Bishop tells her, that's not a choice that you can make. So, you know, she tells him, and I also don't want you to go to Atlanta. He says, okay, well, give Carissa the furniture and I won't go to Atlanta. She says, it doesn't work. It's not going to work like that. Either, no. Well, she did She did eventually say, you know what? I'll give her the furniture, but you can't go to Atlanta. I think I repeated myself. Yeah, I did repeat myself. But they're at a standstill because Bishop wants to go to Atlanta. May just doesn't want to give that furniture to Carissa to spite Carissa. I'm all here for her. Spite Carissa at all costs. Don't care. Don't care for Carissa. So then, you know, Bishop leaves. He says, I'll tell Carissa that you said no, that the answer is still no. So then she gets an email from Bob, and it says in the, um, the subject line, it says, a offer that you can't resist or refuse, whichever one. So then May is telling Bishop that the offer that, uh, you know, Bob offered to her was for her to speak at a women's gathering for Hope and Harmony, Harmony and Hope in D.C. next fall. And Bishop is like, so what did you tell him? She says, I told him no, because I have other engagements. And, you know, she's just trying to make, she's trying to place, put guilt on Bishop because, you know, Bishop wants to go to Atlanta. So her saying no to Bob is a way to say, hey, I told Bob no, so you should tell the pastor in Atlanta, you're not coming. And Bishop knows what she's doing. And um, he just says he's doing this because he feels unwanted. And, you know, she doesn't understand what that feels like. And he says he just wants one more Sunday. She was like, Mavis, 
Rochelle Cross, or Rachel Rochelle as I call her. And she says, that's I felt on Wanton every time you've been with them, regardless of if I knew where you were. And, you know, she says to him, she says, sexual advances do not make her feel wanted. What she wants to feel is she wants to feel heard, and she wants to feel respect, he says, you mean obeyed. She says, no, I don't want to feel obeyed. Like, she just wants him to hear her. And, you know, Bishop tells her, well, I not once mentioned Lionel. And she's looking at him like, oh, is that what we're doing? So then we later see Bishop. He's watching his old sermons, and we see Carissa. Carissa goes to talk to Lady May. Carissa has a letter. She's like, you know what? I was going to give you this letter, but I'm going to just tell you what it says. So she tells Lady May that nobody has hurt her the way that Lady May has. And, you know, um, she said that it really did hurt her, the fact that Lady May does not like her. And then, you know, she was like, I'm a because of that, because, you know, she's talking about how her mama treated her. And, you know, she says to her, I'm able to see, you know, Grace's faults. You're able to see Grace's faults, but can you see your own faults? That's a good question. Can you see your own freaking faults, Carissa? So then she wants to blame her for Mac, for, you know, uh, Faith walking into the lake, um, for Bishop going to jail, for, you know, Calvary being taken over by Harmony and Hope. Then she compares her to an old musty jalopy with a dead corpse in the back. And what did Lady May do? She just said, whoop, slap the crap out of Carissa's face. I'm like, May, good one, but you should have punched her. A punch would have did a lot more than that slap, but that was a good slap nonetheless. And then Lady May tells her, get out. Get out, you piece of trash. I'm like, oh, trash. That is exactly what she is. So Bishop comes in and asks him, like, so are you all good? And Lady May says, We've come to an understanding. I'm like, oh, oh, they've come to an understanding. And then Bishop tells Lady May that he is not going to go to Atlanta. And I'm like, okay, but man, Carissa, <laughs> I know your face got to hurt. Like, I know your face is feeling crunchy right about now, like a, like a cracker, like a piece of, like a chip. Oh, I just, when you, when Jacob told you that Dante got fired by the Red Devils, I just heard your face just fall flat on the ground and shatter into a million pieces like like Jesus Christ you just went off and just read Lady May I'm gonna give you that you definitely read her but at the end of the day Lady May is gonna get the last laugh because Jacob does not have that big cushy job anymore <laughs> oh, 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 oh that was funny to me that was oh so funny I loved every single minute of it but we're gonna move on you guys all right, next, you guys, we saw Phil. So Phil was talking to Grace about Jacob presenting this homeless program to the deacons, and he says it's a, a, a duplicate of a perfectly good H&H &H program. I'm like, really, Phil? You are such an Uncle Tom. And, you know, he basically telling Grace, like, I need you to remove it from um, the agenda. And she's like, no, I'm not going to do that. Like, I think it's a good idea because the homeless outbreak here is horrible, horrendous, and we need to do something to combat it. He's like, well, I'm just trying to advise you. She says, well, consider me advised. So then we see Grace. She go, goes into her office because, um, well, when she goes into her office, AJ is there. And he's asking her for cash. And she's like, wait a minute. I just gave you cash three days ago. He's like, I, you gave me a few weeks ago. She says, no, it was three days ago. So we see that AJ has blown through that money. I, don't, I wonder how much money did she give him? So she asks him, like, how's the job search going? He says, it's going. And then, you know, Phil comes into her office, and he's like, so, Grace, your lawyer's here. She's like, oh, thank you. And then he asks her, like, so where's Corinna today? She says she's with Bishop. He says, oh, she's on a sick day. She says, no, she's working with the bishop for me. So she's not on a sick day. And Phil says, you know, Phil says, okay. And he's trying to, he's, he notices, uh, you know, AJ. He's asked her who AJ is. She says, none of your concern. I'm like, right, Grace, tell him. So then, you know, she does give AJ a little bit of money. She says, this is all I have on me, but I'll put some more into your account later. So she tells him, you know, can you can you go out the back way? I'm like, oh, come on, Grace. I mean, I get it. So then we see Grace. She met with Aaron, and Aaron is telling her, like, hey, all the bishops' IRS problems, they're in the past now. And then, she, you know, she asked him for help for AJ to get a job. And Aaron says, you know, if it's for you and you vouching for him, absolutely, I got you. So then we see Aaron. He's meeting with AJ. And Aaron is speaking so highly of Grace. And you can see that AJ is visibly upset about this. And I'm like, oh, this is not going to be good because 
the grace that Aaron is speaking of, AJ doesn't know this grace because grace gave him up and he has resentment toward her, which I definitely 100% understand his resentment toward her. Um, but she is helping him now. So, I mean, I can get both sides of it. So he asked him, like, where's the restroom at? And he says, oh, it's down the hall and to the right or left, whichever way. So then we see Aaron. He calls Grace and he tells her, like, you know, AJ left and he never returned. So what's up with that? So then we see Grace. She goes over to AJ's place. to, see, You know, she's asking him, like, so why did you leave? And he says, because, again, Aaron talks so highly about you. I don't know that aspect of I don't know the aspect of you. Like, I've been through so much. I had to sleep on the streets, get punched, you know, eat shit. When I feel literally eat shit, but he just said shit. Like, he just dealt with bad shit. And I'm saying, I'm saying shit because he said shit in the episode. But, um, and, you know, she um, tells him, so why did you leave? He says, because I didn't want to blow things up. And, you know, she's like, well, you can trust me. He says, no, I can't trust you. He's like those evil guys in prison. I can trust them much more than I can trust you because you're a good person. They can't see any bad that they do. And, you know, he tells her we're done. She's like, what do you mean we're done? He says, we're done. Like, I don't want anything else from you. I'll, you know, I'll get a job. I'll figure out how to pay the rent. And he says, also, the next person who asks me who I am, I'm telling them. I'm like, ooh, okay. This is going to be interesting. We're going to move on, you guys. All right, you guys, so next we got Zora. So Zora, she got a call from Nikki. She was preparing for the Little Saints. And, you know, Nikki was like, girl, you need to come over to this party. She's like, what party? She says, Dante is having a party because Dante found out that he's an all-star. She's like, well, how long was the party going to be? She said, it's all day. And I'm like, so y'all going to be drinking all day? Like, I can tell that y'all are young kids. Like, y'all are doing stupid things. So then we see Zora. She gets to the party, and Dante is clearly drunk. And I'm like, really, little boy? Like, you know, he done mixed, he done made his own little concoction. And I think he said it had nothing but Hennessy in it. But you can clearly tell little homie is drunk. So then, um, you know, Zora was uncomfortable. So like I said earlier, she called Jacob to come get her. When Jacob got there, you know, the party was out of control. because, And actually, when she was on FaceTime with Jacob, you could see Dante in the background. He had this uh, Confederate flag. He was getting ready to, quote, barbecue the uh, Confederate flag. So Jacob got there. Jacob tried to calm him down and stop him from doing it. And then some other teammates came out there, and they tried to tell him, like, yo, we got the, one of the biggest games of the year, and don't mess this up for us. And one of the other little guys that was recording, he said, you know, he said, boy, you sit on the bench. And the white boy just hauled off and punched him in the face, and then that started the fight. And I'm like, well... There go your little career. Like, why? I don't get why people feel the need to put everything on social media. Like, it, 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 some there are certain things that you just shouldn't put on social media, and I just don't get it. But who am I to judge? Who am I to judge? And then lastly, you guys. So we see May. May was you know trying to prepare to help Zora for her um, little saints, and she asked Grace, "Does she know anything about Hebrew?" And then Grace finally says, "Mama, I need help." with my son. I was like, dun, dun, dun. But you guys, that was the episode. It was a pretty, it was a really good episode. Um, be sure to like the video, leave your comments, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you guys later. And also, if you guys want to find me off of social, if you guys want to find me on my other social medias, my Twitter is JB, JB underscore the underscore CEO. Snapchat, it'll be in the description bar below. And my Instagram, it is the same as my YouTube name, JB Says What. So until the next video, guys, later.